Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a guess my number program. So the computer is going to think of a random number between 1 and 100 and we have to guess it. I'll start by guessing 50, which is too big, so I'll guess 25, which is too small, and 37, which is also too small, and 43 is too small, 47 is correct, and it tells me how many guesses it took. Alright, so let's get started. Go ahead and pull up a new App Inventor program, and I just called mine Guess My Number. The user interface here is going to be pretty simple. If you remember from the video, we have a couple of labels. So go ahead and drag down two labels from the user interface. They're right here. And drag and drop them onto your screen. Now we need to change the text that's inside of the labels. So our first label is going to tell the user that we're thinking of a number between 1 and 100. So to change the text, you're going to need to click on the label here. And then we can go under the properties panel and scroll down to where it says text. And currently it says text for label one because that's what's showing on the screen. But we want it to instead say, I'm thinking of a number between one and 100. And it's updated on the screen. Now we need to change our second label. So instead of text for label two, we want to make it enter a guess. And again, we can do that the same way by going under properties and to text and enter a guess. Cool, so now we need a place for the user to actually put in their guess. And we can do that with a text box. So that's a box that allows the user to type in something. So the text box is down here at the bottom of user interface. So go ahead and drag and drop that onto your screen below the two labels. The only thing we really need to change about this is um, right now it has a hint that says hint for text box one. It doesn't show up on our screen, but if you open up the app, it will as this kind of light gray text that's inside of the box. So instead of saying hint for text box one, let's just put guess so that they know that's where they're going to put their guess. All right, the other thing we need is a submit button so that they can tell us once they've made their guess. Buttons are at the top of the user interface section, so pull that down onto the screen. And then we want to change the text from text for button 1 to submit. The final thing we need is a notifier, and notifiers allow pop-up windows to come up, and we use pop-up windows to tell the user if their answer was correct or too big or too small. So go ahead and drag notifier onto the screen. Now, Notifier doesn't actually change what's on our screen. Instead, it goes under non-visible components, and that's because the Notifier isn't always active. We don't always have a pop-up. We only have it come up once they've hit the Submit button. That's all we're going to need for the user interface, so let's go to Blocks, and that's this button in the upper right-hand corner. The first thing that we need to code is the value that the computer is thinking of. And we want to store that value in a variable. Again, a variable is a way of putting a label to a certain number so we can keep track of it during our program. So to create a variable, we go to our variables category and pick the first one, which says initialize global name to. Initialize means create. And drag that down. And where it currently says name, that's the name of our variable. So we want to change that to a better name than just name. So I'm going to make mine number. Now we can't just make our number something like 14 or 52, because if we did that, the user would start to catch on that that's always going to be the answer, and then the game won't be any fun anymore. So instead, we want to choose the number randomly so that they get a different number every time they play the game. App Inventor allows us to choose random numbers with a block under math. So we can click on math, that's the dark blue one. And there's a block that says random integer from one to 100. Integers are like whole numbers that can be both positive and negative, but in this case, we only care about the ones between one and 100. So go ahead and pull that down and snap it in there. So now our number is going to be some value between one and 100. We don't know what it is, but we can trust that App Inventor is going to figure that out. Now that we have that, we want to make the code to give the user feedback when they enter their answer. Is it too big, is it too small, or is it correct? And we only want to give them that feedback once they've hit the submit button. We have to wait for that. We don't just do it after they typed it in because they might have made a mistake. 
So uh, we want to trigger the action once they press the button. So that's going to be a block under button one that we want to get. So if we click on that here, the first thing is when button one dot click and that is triggered when the user clicks the button. So go ahead and drag that down. Now, what do we want to do when the user clicks the button? Well, we want to compare what they put into their answer to what the answer actually is. And depending on how the two compare, we're going to give them different pieces of feedback. And when we want to make decisions based on some condition, that's a good candidate for an if statement. And if statements are found under control, so click on control up here. And we want this if statement at the top that says if and then. Note that this is different from the one down here that says if then else. We want this one up here, it's slightly different, and this is the one that has a little blue gear on it. So go ahead and pull that down and put it in the when block. Now the way the if statement is structured is we give it two things. One is we give it the thing that it needs to check for, and that's called our condition. So if our condition is true, then we execute a certain block of code, and that's the second thing we give it. We need to tell it what to do if the condition is correct. First of all, let's deal with the condition of if they get it correct, if, they're, if they guess the correct number. To tell if they guess the correct number, all we need to do is to compare the actual answer to what they put in. And we can just do that using equals. So if we go under math, there's a block, the second one allows us to check for equality to see if two numbers are equal. So go ahead and pull that down and put it in the slot here. And it takes two things. The first thing that we're going to want is what the user put in. And we can get that from text box one. So click on text box one here. And then scroll down until you get to text box one dot text. We want the light green one, not the dark green one, because the dark green one is set. So that's actually changing what's in the text box. We just want to get the actual value. So pull that down and put that in one of the sides of the equals line. It doesn't actually matter which one, but I'll just put it on the left. In the other side, we want to put what the actual number was. And to get that, the easiest way is just to mouse over number here. And the first thing that comes up is get global number. So as it says here, that returns the value of the variable. So that tells us what is in that variable. So go ahead and pull that down and put it here. Now we need to decide what we need to do when the user gets it right. And we want to give them some sort of celebratory message, so they need to know that they got it correct. And this is where our notifier is going to come in handy, because we want to trigger a pop-up with our notifier. So go ahead and click on notifier one. And then you may need to scroll down a bit, but we want the one that says call notifier one dot show message dialog. There are a lot of different dialog options, but I like this one because it allows us to have a button. So go ahead and pull that down and put it here. Okay, and we need to tell it three things. We need to tell it what the message is going to be, what the title is, which is what appears at the top of the box, and the button text, and that's the text that appears on the button. So to get text, that's a block under text, and the first one is these quotes. So go ahead and pull that and put it into message. And you can just make this something along the lines of, you got it right. And for my title, I'm just going to make it um, congrats. And an easy way to get another string so we don't have to go all the way back to text, instead you can just hit Command C or Control C depending if you're on Mac or Windows. And then again, Command V or Control V, just as if you were copying and pasting text. Now I'm just going to change this to good job. And then my button text will say play again. And I'm just going to do another command V so I can get that text blocks and play again. The other thing we need to do now if the user gets it right is we need to change the value for the number that they're guessing because if they're playing again, if we don't change it, it'll just be the same number. So we need to reset our number variable. To do that, I'm going to mouse over number again, and now I'm going to get the set global number two block, because that will allow us to change it to a new value. And I'm gonna drag that and put it right under our call block. This is important that it still goes in this indented part and not down here, because this way it will only happen if they got it correct. What am I gonna set it to? Well, this is just gonna be the same block we have before with random integer from one to 100. 
So again, I'm going to copy and paste this block and bring it down. You can also just get it from math again. All right, so we've now covered off on the case where they got the answer correct. Now what if they get it too big or too small? We need to add a different way of dealing with that. And we can actually do that um, just within this if statement by tweaking it a little bit. If you click on the blue gear here, this thing pops up and this allows us to add options to have additional conditions. So to do that, just drag over this else if to the bottom and then drag an else. And I'll explain what these mean in a minute. So you'll notice that now we have these two other sections that have opened up. So else if is pretty similar to an if statement, but it only works if the condition is true and the previous one was false. And that's not as important here because our condition, this, this one here is going to be if their number was too big and it can't be both too big and equal, but it will become important later. So we're going to check to see if their number is too big now. And that's going to be a similar block to here. So go ahead and copy and paste this block. And that copies the things inside of it too, which makes it convenient. And pull it down here. Now instead of equals, we want to instead get greater than. And if you click on this, there are a lot of different options. Um, you should get the greater than sign, which is the one that opens to the left. If they do that, we again want to call up a notifier. So let's copy and paste our notifier and bring it down. But now we'll want to change what we have as text. So instead of you got it right, we'll say you got it wrong. Um, and then our title will be too big. And then instead of play again, we'll make this guess again. Now we need to cover the final case, which is if their answer was too small. We don't actually need a condition here. We don't need to explicitly say if the text that they put in was less than the actual answer. And that's because of this else if. Because else here basically just means otherwise. And so that's if we haven't encountered this possibility in either of the other two conditions. So we go through the first if statement, we deal with all of the ones where it's equal to the right answer, then we get to this elf if statement and we deal with all the ones that are greater than the actual answer, and now the only thing left once we get to here is the ones that are less than the actual answer. So if we've gotten to this point, we know it's less than the right answer and we don't need to have an actual condition. Our text inside of it though is going to be similar to what we did before. So again, I'm going to copy and paste this code and put it here. And instead of saying too big, I will say too small. Now at this point, this is a functioning program and you can try it out. However, there is something we can do here to make it even better. And if you remember from the video, we had a thing where we were able to keep track of how many guesses the user had made so far, and then at the end we informed them of how many guesses it took to get the correct answer. Now I encourage you to see if you can figure that out for yourself, how to keep track of that. Um, so go ahead and try that and then come back here. So I'll show you how to do that now. We're going to need a variable to keep track of how many guesses have been made because we're going to need to change it each time they make an additional guess and then grab whatever values in there at the end to tell them how many it took them. So let's initialize our variable at the top. I'm going to get another initialize block from variables and that's the first one here. And I'm going to call it guesses. Now to start it off, we want it to be zero because at the very beginning they have not made any guesses yet. So the number of guesses will be zero. So I'm going to go to math and get this first block here, which allows us to put in a number and it's already zero, which makes that convenient. Now, if we keep it at zero, that's not going to work because we want to make sure we're updating this so that we have an accurate picture of how many guesses they've made. To do that, we need to add a block of code inside of our when block so that every time the user makes a guess, we increase our guess variable. So I'm going to mouse over guesses and get the set block and put that here. And we're going to set it to one more than it was before. So to do that, we're actually going to say set global guesses to get global guesses plus one, which means we take whatever was in the variable before, we add one to it, and we make that the new value of guesses. So because we're using plus, we're going to need to go to math. So go ahead and do that and get the plus operation and bring that down. 
the first thing that's going to go in here is get global guesses. So go ahead and mouse over that and grab get global guesses. The second thing we need is just the number one. So again, we can go to math and get that number. All right, and that's all we need to update it. So we are taking what was in guesses before, we are adding one to it, and then we're making that the new value of guesses. So now we've calculated this value, but we want to make sure we're actually giving it to the user. And we can do that by telling them once they've got it right, also how many guesses it took them. So um, in addition to saying you got it right, we'll need to say it took you, and then we'll tell them however many guesses that it took them. To do that, we're going to need to join multiple pieces of text because we can't just say guesses because then it will literally say um, guesses and not the value inside of guesses. So we need to split this apart into different blocks of text. To do that, we can get a join block. So go under text here and pick the second one, which is join. And as this tells us, it appends all of the inputs to form a single text string. Inputs are the different things that we give the function. So it takes all the different elements that we give it and it sticks them all together or it appends them. So go ahead and drag that down and we're going to stick this where um, this block you got it right currently is. Next, so next to message. You got it right, it took you is going to be the first thing there. And the second thing that we're joining is going to be the value of guesses. So we're going to get another get global guesses block and put that here. And I'm just going to add one more piece of text below it that says tries so that it will say, for example, you got it right, it took you five tries as opposed to just it took you five. Now it doesn't immediately seem like I can add another thing to join, but you actually can if you click on these settings here, and then it has this block called string. String is basically just another way of saying text. So if you drag string into here, that opens up another puzzle piece opening here. So I'm going to get another text block, which is just empty quotes, and put tries. Now note that I put spaces at the beginnings and ends of here. That's important because if you don't do that, then it will say u5 tries as all one word. And we want to make sure we separate it out. Finally, we need to make sure that we're resetting the number of guesses to zero because once the user plays again, we want to make sure that we start off with zero for the number of guesses and we don't keep building on with how many guesses they had in the previous round. So to do that, we need to set global guesses. So we're gonna get that set block again. So I'll mouse over guesses and pull down set global guesses too. And then stick that at the bottom of here because this is in our block where if they got it correct. And we're just gonna set it to zero. So I'll go under math and get the zero. So congratulations, you made a guess my number program. Uh, you can go ahead and try it out on your phone. As an extra challenge, you can try making a guess the number program that works in the reverse way. So have the user come up with a number and see if you can make a program to guess it.